What's up everybody, a spare with a gun here from Sleepless Nights with another episode on Dragon Quest Builders. When we left off in the last episode, we had made our first Mason's workshop room, workroom thing. Stone Mason's workshop. Aha! I, I, I knew that. Um, and we managed to pick up Rolo, who is a writer, chronicler general shady dude, but is totally trustworthy because he has a big beard. Um, <laughs> so, oh, and we also managed to learn this Chimera Wing recipe, which apparently instantly transports you back to your base, which is cool. Um, let's go ahead and make some of these. I wonder, is there a way... It says build one... Oh, square. Make as many as possible. Use all available materials to make two pots of healing. Yes. Okay, that's convenient. Okay. All right. So that that works out. Nope. Now, Peepa has another quest for us. You know, I've been so starving lately, I could eat my own head. That seems counterproductive. All of this building and inventing is, a hung is hungry work, so I've been thinking. If we had something to cook with, we could make all sorts of delicious, nutritious meals. What do you say? Can you think of something you could build to cook things on? If you do think of anything, put it in a room with a chest so that we can store the delicious dishes we make. So yeah, make us a room to cook in. She's so demanding. Make a kitchen. Eureka, Sparrow works out how to make a cook fire. A simple stand built above a, a bonfire used for making mouth-watering meals. Light source can be used to cook food. Building a room from the ground up. A room must have two block high walls all around, a door, and a light source. Gather all the ingredients you need and try building one. So this is kind of a free form, no blueprint based. We're just gonna build. Now there's already kind of walls here. So I say we use them. Oops, wrong one. We use this. Get rid of that rock. Who put that rock there? Eventually, I'm sure I'll get a pickaxe to, like, actually dig up the, the rocks, but I don't have that yet, so, you know. Lemonade out of lemons. Okay. We're gonna need- aha! See? I'm glad I saved that door. Nope. I am gonna need to build a chest, though, I guess. Give me that. Take out. And we'll probably need a bonfire too. How do I make cook fire? What do I need? So I need more grassy leaves, one bonfire and broken branches. That's fine. Uh, I'm gonna need more broken branch branches because I need to make one of these because they ask for a chest. I have a torch. All right. Um, did I clear all this out? I did. All right, so I'm gonna need. Yep. Here it goes again. Dagnabbit, stop it. I don't know why I'm getting weird jitters. Hold on. Okay, seems to have cleared up a little bit. I think, I, like I said, I think it's my capture card. I'm actually recording this episode right after the last one. Um, so if you've made any comments or anything and I'm not acknowledging them, they haven't happened for me yet. Um, so I built a room here. However... Oh, I didn't have enough room to pick up that seed thing. Uh, that's funny. Uh, do I have enough... Ragged rags? I think I'm wearing that already. So I need more leaves. Let's do some weed trimming. There we go. Eh, I should probably sleep. Oh, this is gonna be a problem, though. We need more beds. I need to throw that bed down somewhere. Because otherwise, I have a feeling we're going to have an occupied problem. Okay. So first of all, oh, I need, I can get rid of this chest by putting it down in the room. Uh, so yeah, all you need to do to make a room is like this, in case you hadn't seen the first episode or the first, yeah, I think it's the first one. Um... It's just two high walls, a torch, and uh, a light source, and a door. That's all it really... I don't know why you don't need roofs. Roofs are, like, apparently not necessary in this game. Um, yeah, so there's that. Let's place you over in the corner. That gets it out of my inventory. 
That'll be fine. Um, oh, I actually have extra sticks. Okay, let's put this in there. Put this in there, put this in there. Uh, we'll put this in there, and I think all of this stuff is needed to make the cooking fire. Yeah. And then whatever we don't use, I'll throw it back in the in the chest here. Okay, so we did use everything. Sweet. Oh, right. I want to place this in the room. Our, our kind of like communal room at the moment. This is just where everyone sleeps. I'm just going to put you over in the corner because no one cares. No one cares about you, Rolo. Um, okay, and this. Perfect. Couldn't have done it better if I planned on it. Sparrow has built his first crude kitchen. Woohoo! A primitive kitchen for the preparation of unfussy fare. Residents will cook food and put it in the chest. So then... Oh, I see. Shrooms on a stick. That's weird. Mushrooms. Fills hunger meter by 20%. Monster egg. Interesting choice. So nothing with the fruit, I guess. Oh, hey, I need to talk to you. Blimey, you did it! You made me a place to cook. Now I'll be able to make all sorts of scrummy food? Thank you. I think she meant scrumptious. And that chest is perfect. If I make anything really tasty, I'll put it in there so you can try a bit too. Yay! Oh, and I got more berries. Yay! Alright. So, now Rolo has a quest for me. Oh, and I wanted to do this to... Let's tidy that up. I like that it's just a push of a button. That's kind of cool. Hey, come here. Well, well, well. By my bulbous belly, it seems we have a kitchen now. This creative power of yours is a wonderful thing. I wonder if your culinary skills are equally exemplary. What say you test them out and make me something to eat? Why don't you make it yourself? What? <laughs> make it yourself? You'll build a whole kitchen for people, but you won't even make me a single measly meal. Yep. You wound me. I thought we were friends. I gave you that idea. By the way, I should mention that I saw some delicious looking orange mushrooms growing down by the water's edge. I'm sure you could make a terrific meal out of a fine ingredient like that. Three servings should do the trick. Do we have an agreement, friend? Three servings? Good grief. I'm walking around with 13 fruit and he wants three servings of food. Mushrooms? No, that's a tree stump. Alright, I know I've found mushrooms. He did say the water's edge. Woo! Well, what are what water's edge is he looking at? Alright, I'm gonna find some mushrooms. Okay, so I managed to find his stupid mushrooms, and in the process, I killed one of those bat things, and I actually got a coral lily bud. So that's new. I'm guessing that actually means that I can plant plants, which will be cool. Alright, so I need to make three of these? Let's just make as many of them as we can, which is 15. Sure. Okay, well, that was interesting. And we're gonna put... Uh, is there any way to, like, split the stacks? I guess there isn't. Swap, maybe? No. Hmm. I guess it doesn't... Oh, there we go. Take out. Let's do five. Oops. Nope. Wrong way. Okay. Put away. Oh, okay, so it puts them all out, and then you can do take out five. I'm gonna give three to him, and two for me. Greedy guy. My friend, do I detect the succulent scent of freshly roasted mushrooms? The fragrance alone is a mellow, mellow, mellow melody. That's weird. Of mouth-watering flavors, my growling gizzard. These shall make magni a magnificent meal. Stop talking like that. It's hard to read. Come now, hand them over, quick, quick, quick. Fine. Marvelous work. We shall have to rename you the cooker. <laughs> 
Kentlin Chronicle covers a wide range of topics. The chapters concerning the preparations of hearty, healthy meals are of particular... P -p pardon You want to see it? Yourself? The Kentlin Chronicle? With your own two eyes? I'm sorry, Sparrow, but that book is a priceless family heirloom. I can't just go parading it around in front of anyone that asks. And besides, the tome is written in an ancient and cryptic script. There's no way that you or anyone else would be able to read it. What little knowledge I myself have gleaned from it has taken years of painstaking study. However, I have not a single doubt that this book holds the key to restoring the city to its former greatness. I shall not rest until I have deciphered each and every one of its secrets. But fear not, my friend. I will not keep these secrets to myself. As soon as I make a breakthrough in my studies, you will be the first to know. Gee, thanks. And as for these mushrooms... Really? It is only fair that you should taste the fruits of your labors, too. Take this as a token of my, our everlasting friendship. Oh, he gave me one back. Gee, thanks. I already made like 15 of them, dude. Jerk. They are better than the, um, the berries for restoring your hunger meter, though. Alright. We're good to go. Clean that up. Okay. What do you do? Oh, now that's cool. You can hold it and not place it and it still casts light. Ooh, that's good to know. For torches. What? Have I finished reading that book yet? Learn some patience, young man. I made it quite clear that you would be the first to know of any secrets I uncover. Deciphering the Kentlin Chronicle will take time, and our work on restoring the city has only just begun. I suggest that, while I continue my study, you labor to rebuild the city to its former greatness and prove yourself the builder you claim to be. Um, yeah. By completing rooms and placing them with them within them, the items you create, you can increase the level of your base. But be wary that you do not place your decorations more than two blocks above the floor, for such items will not count towards your point total. Hmm. Now go, fill your town with buildings and those buildings with furnishings, and see your new home flourish. Pay attention. Now, can you think of anything we could use to decorate all of these new rooms you're about to build? Uh, stone for one instead of dirt walls, maybe? Build up the base level to two. Eureka Sparrow works out how to make a pot. An earthen urn that can be used to store one's personal property. Weird. Decorate the room in your base with furniture and other items to add points to your base meter. Fill your rooms with decorative items and take your base to a whole new level. Huh. That's weird. So, okay, does a chest... Chest is 50 points. I'll have to check and see what the other one is. Blue goo and earth. Okay, so it's a little... Not really easier to make, but more plentiful, I guess. An earthen urn that can be used to store one's personal property. I wonder... Okay, so if I'm reading this right, my guess... Does this add... Oh, this adds 100 points. Yes, please. Thank you. We'll put that on the thing. Give me this. Wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. I just noticed something. I'm not carrying any of the goo, but I can still build out of the workshop. That's cool. That is cool. Plant. The bud of a bloom with pure white petals produces a milk blossom flower when planted. Okay. And that's white petals. Let's try and uh, get into some herbology going on here. We'll put both of these out too. That should help. Okay. So let's put you... Screw it. We'll put it over there. Right? That's 100 points. Nice. Oh, yeah. And we'll put these on top. That's something else. However many points that is, I don't know. Now why... Oh, there it goes. Okay, so that lets me plant them. But if I break them, then they just come back as petals. Okay, so I don't have... Either I don't have, or you don't have the ability at all. Um to do the other stuff. Like, actually, like, farm them kind of thing. Let's put this there. Put 
that there. That's supposed to raise my counter. I don't think it's doing it, though. Okay, fine. Pots it is. Alright, so it's seven goo- or no, it's one goo and three earth, and I've got plenty of both. Let's make a couple. We'll do one in each room, how's that? Even if it's over what we needed, it just seems like it'll make sense. That's kind of cool how they did it, though, like, to encourage you to deck- <clears throat> excuse me, to decorate and stuff. It's basically like, um, you know, you have to raise your city level to a certain point, and to do that you need, like, to decorate and things. So that's kind of a neat idea, a neat concept. Apparently the doors just close on their own. Okay. Um... I think we still got time. Let's... Let's do one... I think one more pot ought to do it. I put one in here... Uh, let's say... Let's say we'll do... Uh... Some different ones for different people, maybe. Yeah! We leveled up! Woohoo! Alright, I'm gonna deal with his, uh, quest thing on the morrow. Okay. Now let's talk to Rolo. Wonderful work, Sparrow. I'm impressed. I don't care. Not only are you a legendary builder, but it seems your powers are becoming even greater. So, let's get this straight. I built two rooms, or three rooms, technically. Uh, built some magical chimera wings, but now he thinks I'm the legendary builder because I made clay pots. Great. No matter how many monsters you defeat, you will grow no stronger. Only by the weapons you wield and the armor you wear will you will your might as a warrior increase. Okay, so that basically confirms there's no XP system. You are the builder, my child, and it is by the by building this base that your your true strength will be revealed. I'm sorry to say, though, that I've made scant progress in deciphering the Kentland Chronicles. I dare say it will be some time still before... By my sensitive ears, did you hear that? No. Oh, he's got a little sword icon and we must be under attack. What's going on? What you, what you got, buddy? Sparrow, I have the most terrible tidings. I know, I know not what has driven them to it, but the monsters plan to attack our great city in force. We must protect Cantlin at all costs. Sparrow, you must prepare our defenses against the coming assault. But fear not, I shall fight by your side, my friend. Oh gee, I'm, yeah, great. I shall do my duty by protecting dear Pippa and our beloved home from harm. Yeah. Rollo speaks the truth. The vicious beasts that dwell hereabouts are heading here in droves. This town is the seat of all of Alfgard's restoration. It must not be allowed to fall at the hands of the monsters. With an oaken club in hand and enough healing cream to tide you through the onslaught, you must drive back the Dragonlord's foul followers. My child, are you ready to face the fight? Let's do this. This is your first real battle, but fear not, for I know you will prevail. Yeah, I already got a club. Oh! That's... Oh, that's weird. Phase one of one, defeat the monsters. Some skeletons appear. Where? Oh, there they are. Oh, this is interesting. Oh, wow. They got a lot of health. Where you going, dude? Boom! Wow, they are all about people right now. Ow, she. Boom! Right, one more. Oh, he's a biggin! I think. Maybe? Is he not a biggin? How about that? Wow, I cut that a little close. The monsters are defeated. Victory! Woohoo! Well done. You have saved Cantlin from the monsters' audacious advances. As hope wells within the townspeople's hearts, so too will your banner of hope grow, blanketing the land with ever more warm and tender light, aka expanding our borders. But now it seems the location of your base is known to the Dragonlord's vile vessels. 
The monsters fear that. Should the people of the Alfgard band together, they will lose their dominion over these lands. No doubt these beasts will launch yet more offensive ere long. I guess, is a word. In an attempt to crush this beacon of hope. You must protect this place, my child, whatever it takes, no matter what manner of brutish behemoth assails it. Okay. Hmm, do you not know if you are equal to the task? In fact, I think it said I don't know. In fact, you do not really understand what this task I have given you is all about. You just want to build things, not fight the monsters. At this very moment, that may well be so. But as you come to know more of the people here, you will realize that with great power comes great responsibility. <laughs> ah, I have done all I can for this benighted land. The rest is up to you. Work together with your new friends and restore the city of Cantlin to its former greatness. I must leave you now, but I know that we shall meet again when your work here is done. Until then, know that I do watch over you always. Interesting. Sparrow obtains a pair of blue tablet fragments. Okay. Boom! What did that do? That'll teach them- Hey, there's somebody else! Who are you? I saw a great shaft of light on the horizon and thought it warranted investigation. Imagine my surprise when I discovered a bustling village. But who are you? And what are you doing in a place like this? I beg your pardon? You're building a city? Hmm, good luck with that. If you expect people to work together and live in harmony, you've got another thing coming. <laughs> I hate to burst your bubble, boy, but there's not a man alive who has the luxury of looking out for anyone but himself. Well, that's a very skeptical point of view. Speaking of which, I'm tired out after that trek. I'll stay here and rest for a while if you don't mind. Yeah, look out for yourself. Yeah. The name's LaRouche. Shan't be staying long, I don't think. But in any case, please to make your acquaintance. Okay. I'm thinking of a name for that guy. Um, let's see. So I'm assuming that when we leveled up, it was supposed to push our boundaries a little bit, but it doesn't look like it has, unless it was very subtle. But our banner has changed. That's kind of cool. Alright. Um, so, ironically enough, the the new guy doesn't actually have a mission for Oh, what is this? Blue tablet fragment. I don't think I can do anything with it. A shard of stone slab that glow with a cool blue hue. Hmm, intriguing. Brilliant work showing those blighters who's boss. Okay. But it seems the filthy fiends have found our humble settlement. We have no way of knowing when they might strike next. We must devise some means to keep them at bay. Walls are good. By the way, I noticed that you found a pair of curious stone fragments in the aftermath of the battle. I had seen an artifact of similar design in the Cantlin Chronicle, and a man of action that I am, I investigated further. If you were to stick those fragments together again, I believe they would form a device known as a teleportal. Apparently you can just plonk that thing down on the ground and hey, presto, it will whisk you away on a sunbeam to a place where you can find whatever your heart desires. For a builder like yourself, putting together a thing like that should be a piece of cake. Well, Sparrow, do you think you can glue that teleportal together again? Probably. Okay. Teleport an ancient artifact that can convey you to far-flung fields. Once placed, can be used to travel to and from another island. Huh. Interesting. That seems useful. Wait, is that the is that the gold? I'm guessing. Of oh, the quest is to make a teleportal. Boom. Marvelous. By my baby blue eyes, you've done it. You've made a teleportal. Now you can travel to distant, mysterious worlds and back again. In these new and exciting lands, you're sure to find new and exciting materials with which to build a new and exciting items. He's really talking about new and excitement. Quickly now, pop, plop that teleportal down on the ground and hop through it to whatever wonderful destination awaits you. What if it's a bad destination? Do you ever think of that? Actually, Sparrow, before you head off, there is something I wish to ask of you. Something on which the good of our city and its continued growth may depend. 
Once you have that ter teleportal up and running, I beg you, speak with me before you step through it. Okay. Go plop it down and jump through it, but wait, don't do that. Okay, that's... sure, why not? Uh... How exactly does this work? I'm trying to... I'm gonna try and keep it in line. Well, maybe I shouldn't. Yeah, tell you what, let's build it over here. I really probably shouldn't be breaking these rocks, because I'll probably get a way to use them at some point, but whatever. Alright, let's try... Like, why not? Boom. Portal to another island opens up. I wonder, is this more like a Portal Knight system than Minecraft where you have a limited amount of space and then you go to different islands or something? Let's see if that's the case. By my athletic physique, the teleportal has activated. The, mis the mystical swirling light is positively hypnotic. When a teleportal shines like that, it shows that a path has opened to a place where all your dreams can come true. My friend, there is one thing I wish to ask of you before you pass through that glimmering veil. I ask that you find out how to build that most mighty of tools, the giant mallet. The Catlin Chronicle describes the giant mallet as a fearsome hammer strong enough to break huge boulders and fell great trees. Rocks and wood aside, you are bound to find a veritable bounty of new materials wherever this teleport teleportal takes you. And with new materials comes ideas for new items. Items we can use to make our city even bigger and better. The monsters known as hammer hoods carry these giant mallets everywhere they go. I'm sure that they could tell you how to build one. Once you have learnt the recipe, waste no time. Build one straight away and show it to me. Okay. Build a giant mallet. But what am, what am I supposed to be chasing after again? Oh. Oh. Crap, she's talking. That's the wrong person. Uh, by the way, you had a chat with our new visitor yet, the one with the funny little hat. I do hope he wants to settle down here, then he could be used to build the city. Okay. I want to talk to him. It is a wondrous tool. Uh, so spare travel through the teleportal and seek out- Oh! He said to do it before I got in a portal, dang nabbit. Kind of sounded like somebody making a phone call. Her phone's ringing. Ooh. There's an ancient sheet of paper lying at the bottom of the chest. Sparrow carefully unfolds the note and begins to read it. Wanderer of the great plains of Cantlin, I bestow this blue Navaglobe unto thee. Set it firmly upon the ground, and ever shall its guiding light be reflected upon thy compass. If thou wishest to return to a place with confidence, whether it be a place of safety or opportunity, simply set this globe before thee and let it guide thy way. To whosoever readeth, readeth this missive, may Rubus watch over thee in all thine adventures. Sir Reginald Augustus- Okay, so it's the- yeah, that guy. Blue Navaglobe. An iridescent orb that informs its owner of its whereabouts. When placed, its location is shown on your compass. So, like, if I wanted to wander about, I could place it down, and that way I could always come back to the portal kind of thing. Okay, now here's a, here's a thing, here's a thing, here's a thing. So, I use the portal, but in my journey of running around, this is not like a Portal Knight game, then. Because it actually is a connected world. Because that right there is the edge of my current island. And over yonder... No, you can kind of see the edge of the town. So it does exist within the same thing, though I don't know if you can swim. That might be the defining factor, is you might not be able to swim, so you have to teleport to the island. Ah, there's a mallet guy. Come on, I want your, I want your hammer. Give me your hammer. Woo! Sparrow obtains his first clump of fur. Leather armor, a sturdy, studded suit of hardened hide. Defense 9. Leather shield, ah, so you can block. Interesting. Oops, wrong button. Um, recipes. What do we need to make those? So leather is, ooh, copper ingot fur cord. So I don't even know how to get ingots yet. Wood and fur. So that seems more likely than the other one. Woo! Oh, 
They're supposed to be dropping the hammer things or something, aren't they? Ow. First splat of orange oil. Wayfarer's clothes, a light and long-lasting tunic for the trendy traveler. Its defense is five, but its movement speed in is increased. A rainbow-hued brew of colorful goo. Magic dye. That's cool. This is a really interesting... Ouchie! Okay, okay, okay. I got it, I got it, I got it. Whoa, why is there two of them? Three of them. I didn't sign up for this. I, I want a shield. The reach on this club thing is just kind of annoying. Whoa! What the heck was that? <laughs> okay, oops, I hit the wrong button. Hit square. I'm just trying to swing my club. Well, this is kind of interesting. Ouch! Hmm. Well, it said it was so I love climbing? What the? Okay. I thought that was another, like, NPC or something. Apparently, these furballs love climbing. Well, not really sure. Nothing has given me the, uh, the hammer recipe thing. Oh, butter beans. What is that? A simple snack of green beans boiled in the pod. Boiled butter beans. Interesting. Maybe I need one of these guys. These yellow ones, maybe. Whoa! Nope. More fur. Oh, hi! Okay, that's... that's my target. That's who I need. He's destroying blocks. Woo! Wowzers! Okay. Oh no. Oh no. Sparrow obtains his first piece of ivy. Cord! Okay. A coil of cord constructed from tightly twined vine. Woo! Oh, you can climb that! Oh, now that's cool. Good gravy. I'm gonna get iron before I'm supposed- Oh, he can't break iron! Aha! Ouchie! Whoa, whoa! Oh crap! Oh crap! Oh crap! Dang it, man! This guy's a piece of work! We almost got him! Ah, leather sack. Okay, I was expecting more... Oh no! Beware of heights! If you're- if you fall a long way, you'll hurt yourself when you hit the ground. When you're coming down a mountain, take care not to fall too hard. <laughs> yeah, thanks for that. Now you tell me. Uh, the bad part is... I can't craft, um healing stuff without, uh, yeah. <laughs> I can't craft healing stuff without my bench. So, uh, give me a minute, and I'm gonna get back to the town, and then we're gonna wrap this episode up. Okay, so I made it back to town, and I was trying to sleep to restore my health, because it was nighttime, and I didn't want anything attacking me, and when I slept, this happens. A light shines in the darkness. Images begin to form in Sparrow's mind. Okay... Beg pardon? The words of the king hath slipped thy mind? Forsooth, what manner of hero art thou to forget such a speech? Permit me to regale thee with his majesty's words once more. Ahem. In days of yore thy revered ancestor did receive of the almighty goddess the sphere of light. By its power was our world rid of the menace which did beset it. Yet, alas, some few years past, there did arise a new threat, the Dragon Lord. With his cunning, he did steal away the sphere of light from us, plunging the land into darkness once more. 
Should this state of affairs be suffered to continue, the night must surely take unrelenting hold, and our realm perish. So I say unto thee, vanquish the accursed dragon lord and reclaim the sphere of light. All of Alfgard doth place its trust in thee, hero. Fulfill thy destiny and deliver this land from the darkness. So I wonder if this is memory, because he said he didn't remember anything. It seemed like a memory of something that happened long, long ago. But whether it was his own memory or someone else's, Sparrow can't remember. Well, there you have it. Um, I was actually kind of testing some things, too. I wanted to see if when you slept... It does. It does restore your health. Okay. So, yeah. Um, on that note, I think we're going to wrap things up here for this episode. In the meantime, I hope you all enjoyed. If you did, leave a like, and I'll see you all next time. Peace.